good, good afternoon, Michael. How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. Great. Uh, lovely to meet you again after such a long time. Yes, yes. The and last time we met, I remember I was singing to a group of elderly people during Chinese New Year, I think. That's right. That's right. So, so that was during the People's Association event. That's way back in 2019. Ah. Seems wow. like oh my God. Ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Fine. Got it. Got it. it yes. Quite some time back. So, uh, Michael, we have done a couple of uh, wills and trust events together. Yes, yes. For uh, financial consultants and agency leaders yes. uh, in order for them to sort of get an idea of how they can connect with their clients. And the most important thing is when we talk about wills and trust is to make it, uh, you know, break away from the traditions and norms of it. So before I get into that and we get into this session, it is called the hashtag prepare Monday for financial consultants and agents. Okay. Okay. Uh, All right. Michael, you could give us a smack on introduction about yourself and what you do. Okay, uh, I've been a practicing lawyer for the past 30 years. Uh, I do a fair bit of litigation, going to court, uh, getting scolded by judges, scolding other lawyers, getting scolded by other lawyers, you know, things like that. And of course, uh, on the uh, non-going to court side, we'll be doing a lot of paperwork, uh, whether it's contracts uh, and in uh, more relevant to what we're talking about, drafting wills. Great. Thanks, Michael, on that one. So, you know, we remember in 2019 when we had all these events uh, with mm. agency leaders, of course, and a lot of participants from the public about wills, right? How yeah. have we seen that change from then? Because that was pre-pandemic and now, you know, post-pandemic or while we are still in the pandemic. Uh, well, I think there is a growing awareness by the uh, middle-aged working uh, citizen ban okay right. uh, and uh, uh, and the uh, freshly starting to work uh, citizens uh, as to the importance of uh, planning uh, financially uh, both during your lifetime as you start work in the middle of work towards the end of your work you know and then thereafter if anything bad happens to you uh, but as far as the more elderly are concerned, I'll be frank with you, they maybe it's because they believe that, oh, they've got nothing much left to, to give away anyway. Uh, the, uh, the, the more elderly band seems to be about the same. I wouldn't say bochap attitude. It's more like they don't see the importance or the practicality of drafting wills. Right. The younger generation, uh, the parents uh, with uh, nearly adult children, Mm -hmm. parents with uh, children who are already adults, freshly adults, uh, they seem to be more attuned now to, to uh, adjust their life uh, and their requirements and end of life uh, and post end of life arrangements. There seems to be, a, a, I would say a slight uptake, an uptake, not slight, but mm -hmm. an, in, an increase of, uh, of interest. I've, I've, I've been doing a few more wills, more wills than before. Uh, you, can, you can say right. that yet. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's these couples who are, you know, are, are quite aware that there is an importance and need for them to ensure that the next generation is secure to that extent. If we look beyond just insurance, uh, wills would be like the final stroke of it all. Okay. But you must remember, you know, a will uh, is not a security instrument. Right, right. A will is an arrangement instrument. Okay. Security comes from other things like buying a house, paying it off early. Insurance, maybe. Yes. That's a security mm -hmm. arrangement. Mm -hmm. A will, technically speaking, is not. Because a will can be drafted for something for as little as $10. Right. You know, that I want to give $10 away to so-and-so. It can be done by will. Mm -hmm. Or like, I want to give my $1.2 billion estate. can also be done by will. Right. So the will is not really a security instrument, but an arrangement instrument. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess it's something that financial consultants have to get into to understand as well. Security versus, you know, an arrangement. And of yes. course, very rightfully said, it's been the insurance policies or other assets that they have, movable yes. or movable, that is yes. arranged to transfer off to the next of kin. Correct, I mean, correct. I mean, yes, so that's great, uh, um, uh, Michael. And just one question here on that note of these people in this age group, the, the uh, yeah. probably they're going to be in their 50s or 60s. Would I, would I say that? Yes, yes, 40, 50s, around there, yes. And yes. in this encounter with them, uh, do you see financial consultants coming up to you often to say, hey, Michael, you know, I've got this client or this family that would need to write or draft a will. Do you experience that uh, of more lately? Yeah, and even split. I've got a fair, a fair number of clients who uh, have been brought to me by financial con consultants okay, right. and a fair number of uh, clients who come to me through recommendations. Mm -hmm. So one-to-one. 
I wouldn't say most, but a fair number. Uh. Right, that, that's great. I remember we had this conversation, you know, Michael, about what we were doing with the Insurance Collective and, and why there is an importance for financial consultants and agency leaders to look at wills as a very important part of the financial planning process. Yes, yes, you know? as a process that's important, that's true, yes. Oh, that's right. And uh, we often look at it that, you know, I, I personally feel, and some of the advisors who have been very actively involved in uh, estate planning, we, we need to take a step back to look that, you know, a proper financial plan is done first, you know, mm. before a, a will can be drafted or at the point of the will is being reached, you know, when you're having that conversation with the clients. Mm. And we've also seen many consult consultants and agency leaders spend a lot of time in helping their clients draft the will, mm. you know, and, and where do you see certain uh, gray areas when a consultant uh, takes on the role of an estate planner and then moves into drafting a will for his or her clients, as opposed to lawyers getting involved in the process. Do you see a difference in that? Uh, let me see. I suppose because as a lawyer involved in drafting a will, we have also one foot in the execution of the will after death. So right. we, yeah, we know the procedure after death, mm -hmm. as opposed to just writing it down and that's it, no more. We right. know that you know, how you write it may influence what may happen after death and when it's being executed. So there might be an extra, I won't say advantage, uh, an extra depth perhaps when a lawyer drafts it because uh, if the testator were to say or make an arrangement or give instructions, then we think about it, then we realize that wait, 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 this, this may not work you know, during procedure, you might want to think twice. Right, right. You know, yeah, because we've done the, the procedure and then we can, we can foresee there may be some uh, problems that may pop up. Yeah, that's right. That's very true, my friend, because I've noticed that as well, when there are certain discrepancies in, uh, in, in the way that the will is going to be executed, the will firstly being drafted, the instructions being taken, mm. and the actual execution, which is post the death of the, uh, of the testator at mm. that point. And, and let's just uh, take a step back and look again. Uh, what are certain things that advisors have to look out for? You know, if they are so excited and interested saying that, hey, estate planning is part of a por portfolio that I have, it's part of my entire financial planning process. What about a couple of things that they can take into consideration before they even step into this? Ah, one thing about financial advisors who may have a, an advantage over lawyers mm. is that you may understand the family makeup, the, the life uh, experiences of your client mm -hmm. better than we do. Because most of the time, I meet uh, a real client for the first time, the first time. Mm -hmm. And we, we literally need to start from scratch, from ground zero to understand the family makeup, you know, uh, characters, uh, any uh, difficulty between family members, any concerns, you know, that a testator or client may have, even with regards to the spouse, right. you know. Right. Whereas uh, as a financial planner, I can imagine because from my own experience, you have been, hopefully like you've been with the same client many, many years. Maybe you've been with them, you know, through the births of the children, you know, uh, and maybe through difficult periods, accident, maybe you never know. So as a financial planner, you could have a better edge, you know, in understanding uh, the psychology, the psychological makeup, mm -hmm. all right, the mm -hmm. family makeup, not only that, the family dynamics, yeah. so that when your client comes to you to ask to do a, to do a will, you may have a better input. Than we than we are as lawyers, unless I happen to know this client for years, right. you know. Right. As right. to are you sure this is a wise thing to do? Not that uh, I'm uh, as a financial planner, not that uh, I'm influencing you to favor one child over the other. But I I've met your children before, as an example. It seems like your elder one, you know, all she wants to do is dance, you know, and your younger one, you know, he's very meow. You never know. So maybe through some input uh, like that. Uh, the the structure of the will might become better suited for that particular client's family's need. Because at the end of the day, the will is for the family, not for the client. Technically speaking, he's dead. That's right. That's right. right. So uh, the financial planner may have a, a, a better edge that way that you might want to leverage off, you know, to encourage that the will not be a simple, ah, yeah, equal, uh, give everything equal. Uh. Right. Yeah. yeah. Are you sure that's the best thing to do? <laughs> I've got one example, for instance. Sure. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a long client. It was a, I won't say a long client, but I happen to know the client a little bit deeply. And uh, I, it was a reverse. Okay. I assumed that it was give equally to the two children. 
But as it turns out, she said, no, I don't want to give equally. Why not? Oh, because I spent a lot for number two, for tuition, this, that, the other, and he's completely boats up, you know, and he just managed to pass his university and he's getting to be more or less sang, uh, Cantonese, uh, sang sing now, you know, to be more with it. But I spent so much money on him. But my elder child, you no, know, very quiet, no tuition whatsoever, all by herself. I think it's unfair. La. I won't give more to my elder child, but I will explain to my younger child why, 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 what I'm giving more. So this kind of dynamics you won't know unless you deal with your client more, more in depth. And financial planners may have the advantage, huh? Correct. Oh, that's spot on. That's spot on, Michael. We have even experienced that as well. Now, thanks for sharing that. And I can also resonate with that because uh, back when I used to take wills instructions as well for the clients, we did have that edge in understanding the family dynamics, very importantly so. And also where these uh, pockets are. You know, if we look at a client's financial portfolio with whichever company they, they have their policies with, we're able yes. to identify in a snapshot where their assets are going to be, uh, where their policies are going to mature, so mm. on and so forth. And that will definitely give us the edge in understanding the dynamics of drafting that will, yes. or where the instructions are going to go to. Now, yes. one very important key thing here, uh, Michael, I'd like to just get your, your, your views on. Uh, now, moving forward, moving forward with uh, the current pandemic and the situation, right? Yes. And, uh, as we spoke earlier, a lot of the middle-aged people are getting involved in it. Do you think yes. that consultants, financial consultants and agency leaders themselves can get into working with the younger couples in terms of creating an awareness for them about the importance of wills? Or is that something that uh, would take time? Is that something that would come over a period of time across that journey with them as their financial consultant? I'll be frank with you. Hmm. It takes a very uh, particular, fresh, young working person mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, let's say, not just engaged, you know, no family commitments, mm -hmm. uh, to think so far forward right. uh, as to drafting a will because the issue of death is literally 60 years away. Right, yeah. Nobody, nobody thinks of being hit by a car until you're hit by a car, you know, right? Uh, unless, that fam unless that client happens to see uh, family members pass away very young, mm -hmm. then, the, then the idea of death is ever present and it may trigger, you know, a, a, a thinking in that person, young person's mind that uh, this can, may happen to me. It may run in the family, you know, this cancer thing, even though I don't smoke, who knows? Right. Then, well, for those very unique class, they may trigger and ask questions about, hey, what to do? Uh, what if something bad happens to me, then how? Uh, you know? But for the usual, especially those with very long living parents like mine, you actually don't think that far. I'll be frank with you. Mm -hmm. And it might take a lot of coercion, I won't say coercion, uh, um, a lot of persuasion and a constant maybe uh, reminder and background to just get a will done just to complete the financial planning process. But it will be. I, I I suspect for this band of uh, fresh, freshly started working people, I think it will be a little bit of an uphill task. Fam, young uh, young parents with children might be easier because then they realize, what's what if something happens to me? Then who, who's going to look after my kids? I know my wife, but then my house is not paid. Mm -hmm. Then how? Okay, maybe that band they may be more susceptible, more open. Okay, to to uh, conversations about drafting a will because right. they realize that you know, yeah, even though something happened to ha happening to me may be uncertain, but what if I'm looking at my two daughters? I got a friend uh, on Facebook got two daughters, three 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 so cute like Matt, four is so cute like Matt. What if I'm gone tomorrow? Then how? Mm. You know, things like that. So that ban might be uh, more persuadable. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's my view. Right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, I, as more as more we get into this. This topic, I see that there is such a healthy codependence between financial planning, insurance, and wills, and estate yes. planning. You know, uh, both have their their pros and cons. When we talk about a specific age group, the need of it all. You know, insurance is never a need. Nobody thinks again that they're mm -hmm. going to be hit by a car or, or somehow kick the bucket. Right? It's that same mm -hmm. context when it comes to estate planning. Now, um, when we look at the whole topic of wills, right? And, and we have done this. We had this conversation many times. It is such a morbid, ghastly topic to talk about. And, and traditionally, it has been something that people have been avoiding. It is taboo in many of our Asian cultures, right? Mm -hmm. And we have taken a very lighthearted approach, you and I, when we have connected with all these stuff. Yeah. 
that's why we connect very well, is to get mm. that messaging very clear about the importance mm. of wills. And of mm. course, then moving into the AMD Advanced Medical Directives and the LPA, mm. so on and so forth. And mm. we had this coin, we had coined this term, I, I don't know if you remember, the power of three, which is wills, and we have LPA, and of course, the Advanced Medical Directive. Yes. Right? And so with these kind of initiatives, where do you see the direction or what can financial consultants do as, a, as a, a lawyer and also as a person who would then possibly be in the shoes of writing and drafting your will with a financial consultant or by yourself, most naturally by yourself, but, but with a financial consultant, what would you expect, Michael? What would you expect a financial consultant or agency leader to do or, or, or to propose to you in such a way that would then be the tipping point for you to share details about writing a will? Hmm. Um, I think apart from the initial in introduction, I would like the financial consultant to give me from her point or his or her point of view, mm -hmm. any peculiarity about client. Okay. Peculiarity about client's family mm -hmm. that the, uh, that client might not even, uh, 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 recognized perhaps um, right. can't think anything offhand but maybe uh, from the financial cons consultant's interaction uh, the financial consultant uh, believes that maybe uh, one of the children may require a bit more uh, financial assistance uh, as, as they get along in education uh, get along in years which the parent may not really recognize you know, being, being an independent third party something may hit you as a bit odd as to why you know a certain child or certain a few children maybe a, a little bit more ADHD I don't know but the right. parent doesn't see it that way right. you know maybe this, this small things here and there may trigger the lawyer to then ask you know a bit a uh, few more probing questions Mm -hmm. You know, uh, to the client to ask, are you sure you want it arranged this way? Uh, do you want uh, the uh, gift or the or the share given to A, your child now A, you know, be, to be looked after by, by, I know, your trusted sister just for a while longer? Suggestions right. here and there, you know. So right. peculiarities about client would be, would, would be welcome. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's a great point. I, I think uh, where we stand in terms of moving forward with... Uh, the insurance collective, and of course with you, Michael, where we are looking to work together for a long term as well, uh, is uh, the, the, this, the sort of initiative is to let financial consultants be the aces in what they do best, which is financial. Mm. Right? Yes. And, and I always felt that the, the, the uh, extension of estate planning or the knowledge and skills is essential, but there are so many nuances mm. that, that move into estate planning. And, and some financial planners might then have it tough to juggle both financial planning and estate planning, and they don't have the ability to take an independent third party view back. Mm. Right? Mm. So I'm looking forward to working with you, Michael, to bring a lot of fun into the process of will writing, mm. uh, representing consultants across different agencies and insurance companies into building a much more stronger portfolio with their clients, stronger mm. relationship with their clients mm. as well. And then looking at the possibilities of building their clientele base too through proper rapport, proper events, as well as connection and education with their clientele base. Mm. I really thank you, Michael, for your time. And uh, it has been such a pleasure. I always enjoy having these events with you. And we are looking forward to having one very soon as well. Okay. So, uh, and um, I hope that our audience at the Insurance Collective, both consultants and agency leaders, will follow the video, get in touch with us, get in touch with yourself as well, to get a better and deeper understanding on the yes. final book for your client. So yeah. happy Friday, Michael. Thank you so much. Yeah. And looking forward to connecting with you soon, buddy. Okay. See ya. Right. See ya. Thanks. Thanks for this chance. Thank you. Bye-bye.